Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. And in this video, I'm going to address the question that I keep getting about Sky replacement in Luminar 4. And that question is, hey Jim, what if you need to show a reflection of that sky in some water? Um, I get that question a lot and there is a way to do it. Luminar 4 does not do that automatically. It'd be a great feature if they add it in the future. I don't know if they can or if they will. But uh, in the meantime, we have to sort of do that ourselves. And you can do it. Uh, it takes a little bit of work, but it's really not hard. And in fact, it's fairly quick. So this would be, uh, for example, if you sh uh, take a photo of a lake and it's really glassy and still and you got a nice sky, you want to reflect that in the lake, you can do that. Um, if you've got a reflecting pool, like, uh, you know, I don't know, not a fountain, but whatever, a reflecting pool of some sort, or even a swimming pool, and you want to reflect a sky in it, you can do that. In this example, I'm actually going to use um, running water. However, it's a long exposure, so the water is fairly glassy. So um, I don't want to make the reflection super crisp because in running water, you wouldn't have that. But regardless, the thing, uh, the way you do this is the same. And admittedly, I actually couldn't find a good photo of like a lake with really still water that I could use as an example. So I'm going to use running water, but we're friends here. We're going to pretend it's all the same. The point is, the way you do it is the same regardless of what photo you have. So let's just hop into it. I've got this photo here, and that's a long exposure. And I turned it into that where I added a new sky, and then I reflected that sky. So let me reset it, and then we'll just hop through the workflow. Okay, here's my base photo. So I'm over here on the Creative tab. I'm going to choose AI Sky Replacement Filter. And the first thing you have to know about doing this is you absolutely have to use your own skies. I did a video about that. You can use your own skies, but the reason you have to is because you need the sky twice. You have to put in the new sky, of course, but then you have to add another layer and you have to have that same sky available to you. And they're not available to you outside of the AI Sky Replacement Filter, so you couldn't use that um, on the next layer. So I'm going to say Sky Select, Load Custom Sky Image, and I've got one here. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that onto the photo. And boom, there's my new sky. Now, the first thing I recommend doing is checking out your horizon position. I actually want to drag this this way because I want more of that blue and pink kind of uh, happiness. Um, I'll do like negative 60. I'm going to do more of that in the photo, and that's what I'm going to reflect back in the water here in a second. So again, have to use your own sky, stick it in, and then, I, you know, you, you may not need to adjust the horizon. That's not a required step. It, it is for me in this photo because I want to get rid of those darker parts that were at the bottom uh, and the way it applied it on the image I, that, that was showing. So horizon position, I just dropped that. And I got more of the blue and pink, which is what I want to show. So step one, add a new sky. Step two, go to your layers panel, which is up here. Click on a plus to add new image layer and choose that. And this new image layer, it'll prompt you to choose a file. And this is where the new sky um, being your own image comes into play because when you add a new image layer, it's going to prompt you to choose a file that's on your desktop, for example. You can't go pull that sky that's embedded in Luminar uh, in the AI Sky Replacement Filter because you don't have access to it otherwise. So I've got that same file. I'm going to click Open and it'll drop it in on top of this image as a new layer. And there we go. Now you can't see anything and we're going to make some changes. So one of the questions I get is, hey, how do you move skies around? And as I showed you on that previous filter, you can move it with a horizon position, but that's only going to move it up and down. You can also flip it on the horizontal axis in the AI sky replacement filter, but that's it in terms of moving the sky around. However, for the new layer to line up, you need to do a few things. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on layer transform. And what you want to do is because skies, when they're reflected, they're going to be the opposite. So I need to flip it vertically. So if you hover over this little icon there, it says flip vertical. These two little arrows pointing at each other. And if you give that one click, I've now just flipped the sky vertically. And if you wanted to, because this is free transform, you could squish that uh, and do different kind of things. And you might need to do that depending on the sky. You can also move it around if you need to position the sky within your photo. But I'm going to leave it uh, hopefully back where it started. I think I've got that right. And I'm going to hit Done. And I've got a new sky now laying on top of my base layer. Base layer was the photo with the new sky on it. That's the base layer. This layer is the new sky laying on top. Now, of course, you can't see anything. So I'm going to drop the opacity. I'm at 32. It doesn't matter the number. I'm just picking a number that allows me to see through. 
So now you can see through, and I've got my base layer, which is the, the photo with the new sky, and then I've got this layer at a low opacity laying on top of it. So here's where masking comes in. Click on Edit Mask. I'm choosing Brush, and make sure you're in Paint. And now I'm just gonna come over here, and I'm just gonna paint this new sky at a low opacity into the river so that you can now see it here. And you're gonna give me a minute while I do this, I'm not particularly good at being entertaining while I'm trying to mask. I'm trying to do one thing and keep you guys engaged. Um, so there we go. Uh, now I'm gonna come back with the erase tool. I'm gonna use my left bracket key to shrink it. And I'm gonna clean up my mask because as I just said, I can't really do two things at once. I don't really believe in multitasking. I just think it means you're half-assing a couple of things at the same time. Personal opinion. Um, but here we go, so let me just erase where I went over the edges and try to clean that up a little bit. You can always check your mask by doing that. And you know what, good enough for government work and we're all friends here, so we're gonna say good job, Jim, and I'm gonna say done. And now my new sky is reflected in the water. However, um, if you have a reflecting pool and you want a super beautiful reflection, this is where I would say pull that opacity back up um, and you can see the reflection of the sky is gonna come through. Now, truthfully, I could probably have done a better job on the transform layer of lining this up. I'm just showing you kind of how it works. Um, however, this is not a reflecting pool. And what I recommend doing is I'm going to keep that opacity like around 35 where I had it. And if you'll notice, um, let me back up actually. If you notice, as you mask that in, I'm covering up the reflection. So if I turn this layer off, you can see that there are reflections. The building has reflections. Um, these buildings over here have some reflections. But when I turn it back on, you can see that the sky, because I've masked it in and I'm at a high opacity, it's covering those up. So here's what I recommend doing. I would take the opacity down. I was at 35. Every image is gonna be different. These are just numbers and settings that I'm using. But this trick should come in pretty handy. And that is, once you have the opacity kind of like that, you can see some of the reflection, you can see some of the sky reflected. I go change the blend mode. I go from normal and I go to overlay. And overlay does a really good job. By the way, I'm not a master of blend modes. I use them sparingly, but in this case it comes in really handy. And if you wanna learn about blend modes, and specifically the overlay blend mode, I recommend a Google search. There's countless websites that will talk about this. Um, this is not one of them. Um, but the overlay blend mode, the reason I used it is it blends what you have, which is the new sky that I painted in, but it also allows some of that base layer to show through. And that's important because of the reflections. And so I've added the overlay blend mode to the mask that I blended in, and that's allowing these reflections to show through. And now I can take this opacity higher, and you can see it doesn't cover up those reflections. It does a great job of letting the light and the color of the sky reflection come through without overwhelming those reflections that were already there, which is the buildings. And so that's how I would do it. So if I turn this layer off, you can see there's the long exposure with the reflections, but without the sky. And now I'll turn it back on. And there's the sky reflected with the reflections from the, the buildings and that sort of thing. And so that's really how you do it. Here's the before. And here's the after. Now, I recommend every photo is different, just to be clear. Uh, I've done this on three or four photos now. I've been playing with it, and so far it's working really well. However, um, you know, your photos may vary, your mileage may vary, that sort of thing. I recommend trying it out as soon as you get Luminar 4. Check it out and let me know what you think. But so far, it's working pretty well for me. Um, I can't tell you it's going to work perfect in every situation because there's no way I can know what every situation is going to look like. But I'm finding that it's doing a really good job uh, in situations like this where I have some reflections um, that exist that I want to keep and I have a new sky that I want to add in. So it's really simple and straightforward. Use your own sky, add a new image layer with that sky, invert that, and then change your opacity and blend mode to, uh, to your liking, right? Other blend modes may work as well. Some of them are gonna be terrible, but you can experiment with other blend modes, but I find that overlay blend mode has given me the best results so far, way better than the other ones. And that's all I got for you. I think it's fairly simple and straightforward, just a few key steps. And really, if I wasn't sitting here walking through it, once you do it a couple of times, it's like a five minute job. So it's quick and easy. 
It's not automatic in the filter, but it's really not that hard. Uh, use your own sky, get in there, flip it, change the blend mode, mask it in, etc., and you're done. So that's it, my friends. I hope that answers the question that I've been getting so much, which is how do you handle reflections? This is one way. I'm not saying this is perfect, and I'm definitely not saying this is the only way, but this is the way that I've been doing it, and so far it's working really well for me. So hope it helps. I hope it answers some of those questions that you have. Please do subscribe to my channel. I appreciate that. It means a lot to me, and like and share with your friends if you found this helpful. And don't hesitate to leave a comment with your feedback or other questions, and I'll see you soon with more Luminar 4 videos, my friends. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and adios.